Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about DOS, Nintendo Switch, and Razer. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about DOS emulation on Windows with Dream. Dream is a brand new emulator that focuses on LucasArts games. Now, Dream stands for DOS Retro Emulation Arena for Maniac Mansion and other LucasArts scum games. And as of right now, Dream is only available on Windows, but as time goes on, more platforms might be supported. And in terms of overall games, there are 12 supported games currently in Dream. Now, if you've played any of these games, let me know which one of these is your favorite in the comments below. Now, the setup guide for Dream is pretty simple and straightforward. It's right on the website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Check it out. On top of that, if you've purchased any scum games through Steam, they will not work with Dream. As for the menu options, Dream is really streamlined. There's not a whole lot to get hung up on here, but if you want me to do a video tutorial on this emulator, let me know in the comments below. Something great about Dream is that it's focused on emulation accuracy, and something very interesting about Dream is that it includes a miniature 32-bit Windows implementation. So if you're currently using Scum VM or DOSBox, it might be worth checking out Dream here. There might not be a difference for you, there might be a difference for you, but there's really no harm in testing it out. It is 100% free. And speaking about free, next up here, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. This update is pretty quick, but also pretty exciting. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening now boots in game. It's not playable just yet, but this is big progress. I mean, it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but things are rendering. Last up here, we're talking about gamepads for Android. Yesterday, we talked about the Backbone 1, which was just just unveiled at $100. At this price, I think the controller is a little bit expensive. I haven't tested it out just yet, but I did take a look at the D-pad and it does seem a little bit questionable. And at 100 bucks, I mean, this thing was previously released for the iPhone and I thought this was just an iPhone tax. However, not to be outdone, Razer has just announced the Kishi version 2, and this one is also priced at $100. However, the Kishi version 2 does seem like a substantial upgrade over the original Kishi. We have programmable buttons, uh, micro switch buttons, and a D-pad with mechanical clicks. On top of that, it does have a dedicated screenshot and video record button, dedicated Razer Nexus and app launch button, and this is a big one as well, adaptable inserts for compatibility with some cases and screen protectors. And truth be told, I still think 100 bucks is a little bit steep, especially when you compare the price of a DualSense controller, an Xbox One controller, Series S controller, or other high quality controllers. I think one of the big differences here between the Kishi version 2 and the Backbone is that the Backbone does have a headphone jack and the Kishi version 2, as far as I know, does not. The Kishi version 2 does have pass-through charging though. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below. And let me know your thoughts about the price of the Razer Kishi version 2 as well as the Backbone. Is $100 for an Android controller worth it to you? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.